Last fall, Scout Motors revealed their upcoming SUV called Traveler and pickup called Terra. They also revealed that this battery electric truck could be optioned as an extended range EV or e-rev, utilizing a gas engine to recharge the batteries, allowing it to go further. We now have some more details about the technical specifications based on an interview with Scott Kehoe. Link to that in the notes. Let's go exploring. Let me start this updated video on a bit of a downer. I was wrong to guess that they would use a three-cylinder turbo. That guess last fall was based on this one video made by some graphic designer. You can see three things in the rendering. Could it be a three-cylinder from the Volkswagen Group parts bin? No. I did wonder if a three-cylinder would be sufficient to extend the range of such a large truck to 500 miles. The engine they will offer tucked behind the solid rear axle is a four-cylinder non-turbo. Some of the hints given by the Scout CEO include that the engine needs to meet U.S. emission requirements. Now, I'm not talking about fuel economy requirements, which could change, but the emission requirements. It needs to be a Sulev 20 engine. It should be industrialized in the region, already localized. Volkswagen Group has a plant in Salau, Mexico that makes the 1.5 and 2-liter engines. In an e-rev or series plug-in hybrid, the engine does not drive the wheels directly. It only acts as a generator, so the duty cycle is different. The engine runs at a steady RPM, not revving up and down like a typical car. BMW, with their i3 range extender, used a normally aspirated engine. Ram Ram Charger uses a normally aspirated V6. And apparently, the Scout will also use a non-turbocharged engine. In China, you do see some examples of turbocharged engines being used in e-revs, but that could be to avoid a higher tax. Engines over 1.5 liters get taxed more, so a 1.5 liter turbo is a common variant used in e-revs. So likely the engine will be built in Mexico between 1.5 and 2 liters in displacement and normally aspirated, non-turbocharged. In the U.S., Volkswagen only offers that engine turbocharge. So his comments about tweaking the engine may imply that they have to certify a non-turbo version with the EPA. They offer non-turbo engines in other markets, including Mexico. That U.S. homologation requires a little work, but it's not a huge deal. A bigger problem would be tariffs, and hopefully the U.S. MCA gets re-renegotiated by the time they launch this truck. Tucking an engine back there will be a tight squeeze. He said they have a cool solution to manage engine temperature. Being a non-turbo would help with that. Still, it's going to be a tight squeeze for that engine, the exhaust, catalytic converter, and the cooling system. He was a little coy when asked if the range extender would take place of a full-size spare. The Traveler is shown with the spare tire on the back on its split hatch tailgate. The pickup, however maybe has to forego a full-size spare if optioned with the range extender. All this is to be determined. We got some performance details about the battery EV and e-rev variants. All of this is preliminary. Compared to traditional pickups, including the Ram Ram Charger, which is also an e-rev, payload is a little lacking. Compared to lifestyle vehicles like the Hummer and Rivian, it does a little bit better. Scott later compared Scout to Levi's and Carhartt brands. He feels that this can be a true farm truck, but you know, I, I don't buy it. I still see this as more of a lifestyle vehicle than a work truck. Maybe if they decide to offer a less beautiful interior on the base model, but as shown, it's, it's just too good looking to haul manure. That's just my opinion. The full electric BEV will be about a second faster 0 to 60, both powertrain options are 800 volt systems, but the batteries will be different. I'll talk about that next. He said max towing would be a little different. I assume the BEV being more powerful would have the higher number. Target range for the BEV is 350 miles. With the range extender, that has a target of about 150 miles all electric and 500 miles total with the range extender. Those numbers are in the same ballpark as the Ram Ram Charger E-Rev, which is also scheduled to make an appearance in the Jeep Grand Wagoneer as a 4xe. 
Now we get to some juicy details for EV fans. The BEV will have a battery in the 120 to 130 kilowatt hour range, which in my opinion, seems too small given the size of this EV in person and the range that they're targeting. In order to get 350 miles, you're gonna have to be more efficient than a Rivian. And I just don't see it unless there's a base model that they have with tires that aren't as knobby or a suspension that is lowered for better aerodynamics. The numbers just don't add up in my mind. Uh, tell me what you think. I can't imagine that the engineers at Scout are just tossing around targets that they can't hit. The E-Rev will get a smaller battery, 60 to 70 kilowatt hours, and a less expensive chemistry. Now, I thought he must be talking about lithium iron phosphate, and that makes sense, which is a less expensive but heavier battery per kilowatt hour. The smaller E-Rev battery will leave room for a fuel tank up front. The harvester fuel door is on the right front. The charge door is on the left rear, and it uses a Tesla-like plug, the Nax J3400 connector, so it's a small door opening. Connecting the dots with what he mentioned and what he did not, Volkswagen Group is building a battery plant in Ontario, Canada. It does not rely on U.S. subsidies, so there's no risk there. But the turmoil of tariffs and the headwinds facing EVs in North America certainly on their mind, but no indication that they have changed their plan for that manufacturing site. Speculation is that they will manufacture the PowerCo Unified Cell, which is a huge undertaking for Volkswagen Group. It's a prismatic cell for good packaging efficiency, and it will be manufactured with different chemistries, including LFP or different nickel contents to get the cost down. So the E-Rev could be an LFP battery or just a lower performing NMC blend of battery. That less expensive battery could also have a slower C rate. That's the speed at which it can charge or discharge. That could be the reason for the one second slower acceleration of the E-Rev. It's not the weight, but the discharge capability of that less expensive battery chemistry. So my guess is that Scout will wait for the PowerCo Unified Cell to come out of Canada. And again, that's a huge project for Volkswagen Group. Let's hope they get it right and also hope that USMCA 2.0 gets all settled by then. Something Volkswagen Group did not get right the first time is their much maligned Carryod Software Group. Last year, they announced a new partnership to use Rivian's software platform, and he gave some clarification during the interview. Also at CES, they showed off the trucks, but their presentation was focused on what they called their community UX, their digital user experience. To be clear, he wanted us to know that the underlying software architecture will be from the joint venture with Rivian. The presentation layer of the software, the UX, will be 100% defined by Scout, primarily from their Northern California design studio, creating great connected experience that are unique for the Scout brand. And any other Volkswagen Group vehicle or Rivian itself will also be able to define their own UX appropriate for their brand. This is not just a reskin of Rivian's current infotainment system. Based on the pre-orders, the mix of SUVs and pickups is about 70-30, and that mix seems about right. Over half of the pre-orders were for the Harvester E-Rev for a large truck like this. I think that's appropriate, and the pre-orders at the time they were made, we do not know all the price differences between the BEV and the E-Rev. Traditionally, E-Revs are assumed to be less expensive alternative, and with a less expensive battery chemistry that he mentioned earlier, the E-Rev seems like it could come in cheaper. But if demand is higher, shouldn't a for-profit company raise the price? I think Scout is smart not to announce the full details of all their pricing and wait to see how fast battery pricing comes down in the next two years. He said that production is scheduled to start towards the end of 2026. The website says coming in 2027. Simply put, we have some time before we'll see one of these on the road or off the road. Another thing we'll have to wait for is another model. Scott Keogh strongly hinted that a three-row version of the Traveler would be a no-brainer to add. As for a smaller variant, they're thinking about it, but want to focus on launching these models 
and to see if the Scout brand is a good fit for a smaller vehicle. He seemed very confident that large electric SUVs and pickup trucks can sell at high volumes profitably, but I'm a little skeptical. Yes, we love F-150s and Suburbans. Yes, they are profitable, but these trucks pictured are not $60,000 trucks. They look like they're priced over a hundred grand. You know, what does their $60,000 EV look like? I don't know. Can they fill their new South Carolina plant with over 200,000 sales a year profitably at 60 grand? I think we're gonna see a whole bunch of new numbers come in before launch. A little more price, a little less range, you know, blame the tariffs, who knows? But they're definitely great looking trucks and don't call them Rivian clones. It absolutely has its own style and vibe. And if you put a pre-order in or have been thinking about it, tell us what you would order, I'd love to know.